so um, Raquel made my, my presentation much easier this morning because all, most of the motivation was there. Um, and mainly is that uh, recently we had a lot of economic research showing the importance of culture and family traditions on a lot of uh, economic outcomes, in particular how traditional family structures have persistent decisions, persistent effects on household decisions particularly on women's outcomes. Um, speci especially this, this um, cultural traits like patrilineality or patrilocality, bright prize and worry. Also, recently, we also have a lot of information and a lot of evidence on inter-household distribution of resources and how inequality within the household uh, can shape different uh, individual poverty and how this individual and household poverty mismatches tend uh, to decrease uh, the resource shares that uh, women acquire within the household in comparison with men. Um, this can, uh, what, what we're trying to, to show and we're trying to explore is whether this culture, these cultural variations within house, between households can explain these differences in um, intra-household distribution of resources. So this, uh, this paper, the paper that, that I'm going to present, is uh, first has this first um, objective of quantifying individual poverty in several countries, and then to assess how these um, this cultural traits could affect uh, this distribution of resources. Um, I'm going to focus today, because of time, on, on the second uh, part of this of this paper. So what we what we use is we use this uh, recent implementations of collective models that um, allow us to identify the resource shares within the households, and by this I mean how the pie is distributed within the household between men, women, and children. Um, and then we will focus on patrilocality and matrilocality here. Raquel also helped me a lot in explaining what this is, and this is how, um, where this new hus husband and wife go to live after they get married. In patrilocality, they go to the, house, the household or to the, to the town, whether the groom lives, whether in matrilocality they go to the bride's parents. We have also, uh, and it will be more important in the case of Latin America, we have also neo-local or ambilocal uh, traditions of, of residency after marriage where uh, the new couple can either decide whether to go in ambilocal or neo-local where the, the new household, uh, the, the new couple builds a new household. Um, what we are going to focus in this case is in the ancestral rather in the actual practice of patrilocality or matrilocality. This is first because actual arrangements, we are, we are focused on, on bargaining power or bargaining decisions within the household. And this current practice can be affected by other decisions, uh, other decisions that can, uh, that other factors that can always also affect bargaining power within the couple. But if we go into ancestral um, practices, the practices that the, the, the ethnic uh, group had before uh, industrialization, uh, this um, will not affect current practice of, of patrilocality and bargaining processes. Also because, as, as Raquel also explained very well today, local, local policies and uh, local practices can affect uh, cultural practice, in particular patrilocality and matrilocality. And last, because what we are interested in particularly is on how the the cultural trait portrays uh, current norms. So how this transfers, what happened a, lot, a, lot, a long time ago can transfer to current practices nowadays. So um, the mechanisms and practices of, of uh, how patrilocality and matrilocality can affect current results have been a lot, uh, explained a lot today, so I, I, I'm able to, to jump this, this part, but um, the effects even of the current practice and the ancestral practices on mainly gender, female uh, outcomes has, has been proven by a lot of, of previous work. 
Um, our, our empirical strategy resides mainly as on, on Dumberle, Wallen, Pendaker extension of collective models that allows us to estimate, uh, to infer um, the sharing process within the household based on the, on, on the existence of assignable woods. Um, what we're going to try to identify is this, this ETA, that's the resource share that goes to each of the household uh, individuals, men, women, and children, um, that we are going to, uh, to say that it depends on demographic factors as the number of people within the household, the age of women, men, and children, and the urban category of the household, and also for, and, and interestingly, that our contribution re resides here in the um, Adami that identifies whether the ethnic group, the, the household belonged to an ethnic group, belongs to an ethnic group that used to practice um, patrilocality uh, in, before uh, industrialization. For what, what we do is to focus on private assignable, assignable goods. These are goods that are only consumed by one um, type of individual within the household. In this case, and in, as in most literature, we focus on, on clothing, male, female, and children clothing, that are only consumed by male, female, or children within the household. By doing this, uh, the observed uh, household budget of this type of, of good uh, will depend on how much the type of individual receives this ETA, the share of the individual of the total consumption, times their, uh, their angle curve for the consumption. That will depend on their taste, the beta, and on the total uh, share, uh, the total expenditure they, are, they obtain. Um, this, this derivative uh, is observable in expenditure uh, service. And by this, and adding some additional restrictions on preferences on this beta, we can perfectly as, uh, identify the shares of, uh, of consumption of each type of uh, member within the household. Just uh, a clarification, we just have the total expenditure that um, goes to all the children in the household, all the women in the household, and all the men. We we're not able to identify specifics within, each, uh, with, within women, men, or children. Um, so um, the main application on the paper that, that I'm presenting now is uh, based on Ghana and Malawi that are very interesting con uh, situation, uh, co si uh, uh, countries in these terms because they have both patri and matrilocality norms in the same country um, and they don't have uh, any other, they don't have ambi or, or neo-local traditional norms. This, uh, this allows us uh, to, to study the differences within country of uh, we have in internal heterogeneity, but also we have uh, the possibility to compare to two different con contexts in terms of uh, getting some external validity. And uh, these two contexts that are very different because in the case of Ghana, we have mainly a patrilocal context, and in the case of Malawi, we have mainly a matrilocal context. Also, I'm going to present very, very, very preliminary results from Latin America um, for, for three Latin American countries, Bolivia, Brazil, and Mexico, um, that, that we are working on in terms of uh, getting a follow-up paper of the, of the first. Um, so, uh, for, for getting these ancestral norms, what we have to do is some data work in order to match the, the, the expenditure service on which we work with the ancestral norms of patria and matrilocality and neolocality for each household. Um, the first uh, strategy we use is the very traditional one, um, for the, the most traditional one in the literature that's individually matching each of the, the ethnic groups that the household declares to the ancestral, um, the Murdoch ethnographic uh, atlas that recovers the, the practice of almost 1, 000, over 1,000 ethnic groups around the world before they had contact with uh, Europeans. Well, at the moment, they had the contact with Europeans. So in this case, we have information uh, that 
goes beyond like 500 from five to hundred to five hundred years before um, nowadays. Um, then what we also do for sensitivity analysis in the case of Malawi and Ghana, but that's the only case what that we can do for Latin American countries is to um, a, a geographical matching based on the place where the household resides and the traditional norm that was prevalent on that area in, in before industrialization. So this is, oh, I don't know if it, this is the patrilocal and matrilocal um, distribution for households in Ghana, Malawi, in, in these two strategies. There you see that they are very, very similar. So turning to results, um, first, these are the average uh, resource shares for men, children, and women. <coughs> for Ghana and Malawi, for two types of, of households. The first one uh, for columns one and three are households with men, women, and children, and the other are households with men and women. And what we see is that the resource shares going to each men, women, and children follow the, 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 the previous results that we had for this uh, region and for these countries, and the, the pattern of gen gender inequality prevails as uh, the resource shares going to women are high, uh, lower than the ones going to men in both cases and in both uh, types of households. With this, these are mar the most interesting results now. We see that in both types of households and in both, uh, in both countries, the effect of patrilocality is negative on resource shares for women. So households from patrilocal ancestral culture um, allocate to women less, uh, less resource shares than for than matrilocal uh, households. And this, if we compare to the, compared to the average resource shares of women uh, in, this, in these countries and these households, it represents about 10% uh, res uh, less resource shares in, in, in for women in patrilocal contexts. Turning now to our very, very preliminary results from Latin America. Um, I can't stress that more. <laughs> um, we find that we still have negative effects for patrilocality in the three countries in both types of, uh, of households. The point estimates are negative in all cases. However, they are only, um, they are only significant in the, the case of, of Brazil. Um, and what, what we have is three possible hypotheses for now of what could be happening in these cases. First is that we can only use geographical matching inst instead of individual matching. So what we are seeing there is the effect of the household residing in an area that was mainly patrilocal uh, instead of mainly, and this is our other hypothesis, mainly neolocal because in Latin American contexts, matrilocality is very um, less, it's almost non-prevalent, as you can see here in this graph. So uh, the distribution of, uh, and this is our second hypothesis, is that the distribution of locality traits in the population is very different from what we had seen in African, in the African context. I'm finishing. Um, so uh, this, this households, this uh, countries, uh, what, what we're comparing in Latin America, Bolivia, Brazil, and Mexico, is patrilocality against neolocality. And in this case, the effect is expected to be uh, less strong. And last, and, and this is where we are farther from our area of expertise, is that the colonization process of both, can, both regions was very different, especially in terms of the amount of population from European countries that went to the, to the colonized, colonized regions. So the mixture of population and mixed ethnics was uh, much higher in Latin America than, happened that, than what happened in Africa. So this transmission of cultural ancestry can be uh, less pronounced than uh, what we are seeing generally in Africa. So this is um, just... Uh, this, the, the main take of the, of the paper, maybe, it's that uh, the, the persistent effect 
of these ancestral cultural uh, patterns is clear, especially in the case of Africa. We have some trace of effects in the case of Latin America that we should expl exploit a little bit more to understand the differences within, between regions. And um, well, thank you very much.